Hello, Matthews. Gatos here. We're going to review 2.1 before we get into 2.2. So here I have points x, y lying on the original square root function and points m, n lying on this transformed graph. So before I begin doing anything with this equation, I want to isolate y and factor b. So if I have y minus 8 is negative the root of negative 4x plus 2, the first thing I'm going to do is add 8 to both sides, just isolating y. So in doing that, I get y equals negative, and then I'm going to factor out that negative 4. So it would look like this. I always like to do a little check here. If I put in negative 4 back, I would get negative 4x and negative 4 times negative a half, positive 2. So I know I've done that right. Okay, let's come up with the mapping notation. So remember on the outside, this is what I'm doing to y. On the inside, this is what I'm doing to x. So in terms of a mapping notation, I'm taking all of my x, y, and let's do the x first. So x is horizontal, and remember horizontal lies. So I have a horizontal reflection and then a horizontal stretch by a factor of a quarter. And then I'm moving it one half to the right because horizontal lies. So it's the opposite of what I would think. On the outside, that's my y values. So I have a vertical reflection and a vertical translation up 8 units. So really, when it comes to it, this is my m value. This is my n value. So in the first one, it says, find m and n if x, y is 4, 2. So 4, 2 becomes, now we're going to substitute it in. So negative a quarter multiplied by 4 plus a half. And then 2 will be negative 2 plus 8. So negative a quarter of 4 is negative 1. And negative 1 plus a half is negative a half. And negative 2 plus 8 is 6. So m and n would be negative a half and positive 6. Okay, on this next one, I'm going to go backwards. I want to find x, y if I'm given m and n. So this is m, this is n, and I'm going to use the formula I know for m and n. So for m, negative 25 is equal to negative a quarter x plus a half. So just to get rid of my fractions, I'm going to multiply the entire equation by 4. So I'll have negative 100 equals negative x plus 2. Subtract 2 from both sides and divide both sides by negative 1, and I get x is 102. I'll do the exact same thing for n. So n is negative 2.1, and that's the same as negative y plus 8. So I will subtract 8 from both sides and divide both sides by negative 1 and I get 10.1. So that means that x is 102 and y is 10.1. So just a little review from 2.1. So in this section here for 2.2, we're going to look at the square root function. So basically, we're going to be given a graph of f of x and then asked to draw the square root of f of x. So a square root of a function. If y equals the root of f of x, it's a square root of the function f of x. Now that is only defined when f of x is greater than or equal to 0 because you can't square root a negative number. The mapping notation when we take square root, remember mapping notation for any kind of a function is how I go from one point to another. So x stays the same. It is only y that changes, and it's just the y value that is square rooted. So x stays the same, y is square rooted. So let's look at this example here. I have this linear function x plus 3, and I want to graph the square root of x plus 3. So here I have this nice little table of values, and what I'm going to do is x stays the same. I'm going to take the square root of all of the y values. So square root of negative 1, not allowed. Cannot square root a negative. In fact, on my graph, I can note that anything in that area will not exist on the square root function since I can't square root a negative. 
So then I go to my next one, 0. Square root of 0, square root of 1, square root of 2, square root of 3, square root of 4, square root of 5, 6, and 7. So that'll definitely give us a really good idea of what the graph looks like. So let's plot some of those points. So I have negative 3 and 0. I have negative 2 and 1. I have negative 1 and 1.4. I have 0 and 1.7, and then I have 1 and 2, 2 and 2.2, 2, 3 and 2.4, and 4 and 2.6. Okay, so I can see it's starting to get up. So between these two points here at 0 and 1, I can't just have a straight line. I kind of have to curve to get to that and then I just keep on with my curve. So that's a rough sketch of what the square root would look like. I wanna zoom in and just examine this graph a little bit closer. So I kind of zoomed in so I could see some things that are going on. So the first thing I wanted to point out is that we had invariant points. And again, those are points that don't change after a transformation. The first place that I had an invariant point was when y was 0. The reason I have an invariant point is because the square root of 0 stays as 0. So invariant point right there. The second place I had an invariant point was at 1 because the square root of run, 1 is 1. What I'm really interested in is what's happening between these invariant points and above them. And in this area here in particular, I want to know what is happening in there. So if you look at right in there, I want to look at what's happening. So first thing that I want you to notice is that the blue graph is your uh, square root function. And I see that the blue graph is below the red graph originally. Let me just highlight what I'm talking about. So the blue graph is below f of x. So see right in here, it's below f of x. And that will happen any time f of x is above 1. So you see the invariant point here at 1. Anytime I'm above that, the square root function will be below my original graph. Now let's compare that to when f of x is in between 0 and 1. So you can see in between 0 and 1 in this area here. The square root of the graph, if you'll notice here, is actually above the original graph. So f the square root of f of x is actually above in between 0 and 1. And then, of course, f of x, anytime f of x is below 0 in this area here, the square root of f of x is not allowed because you can't square root a negative. So a couple areas that are going on here. Invariant points at 0 and 1 and interesting things that happen in between. So when it's in between 0 and 1, the square root is above. When it's beyond 1, the square root is below. Let's look at that in a little bit more detail. I want to know why is the square root of f of x below f of x when f of x is greater than 1? So what I want you to think of is think of any number greater than 1. So for example, I chose 4. So if you look at 4, the square root of 4, which is 2, is below the original number. So see the square root of 4, which is 2, is below 4. So anytime your function, your original function is greater than 1, the square root will be below. Now let's look at why it's above when it's between 0 and 1. So think of any number between 0 and 1. I chose 0.5. So if you look at 0.5, the square root of 0.5 is actually bigger than the original number. See here the square root of 0.5? It's actually 0.7, which is bigger. So what that tells me is anytime my function is in between 0 and 1, f of x will actually be above. It'll curve above. So I came up with a um, kind of a way for you guys to help you remember that. So if you look at your graph and you draw a line at your invariant points of 0 and 1, so an invariant point at 0 and an invariant point at 1, it splits the graph into three sections. It splits it into three sections, one, two, and three. So 
So if we remember the acronym BAN, this will help us. BAN. B stands for below. So you can see the graph of the square root is below the original graph. A in this st section stands for above. So you can see the square root is actually above. And then N stands for not allowed. And in that section it's not allowed because you cannot square root a negative. So Whenever we look at these graphs, we can kind of draw in little lines, 0 and 1, and help us with BAN, figuring out where the graph would be. So let's try that. So we have this linear graph here, and we want to graph the square root function. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, looking at this linear function, I'm going to draw in my lines at 0 and 1. So just a little rough sketch here, so at 0 and at 1. So I know I have an invariant point right at 0. I know I have an invariant point right at 1. And I'm going to use my BAN notation, B-A-N. Okay, so looking at this, I know that above 1, the square root function will be below my original function. So see how it's graphing below, just as a little rough sketch. In between 0 and 1, it will be above. So it's going to kind of come above like that. And then below 0, I will have no graph, again, because I can't square root a negative. So just as a rough little sketch there, I can see that that is what my graph would look like. Let me just make that a little bit bigger so you can see the whole thing. There we are. Okay? So just as a little rough sketch of what it would look at. So invariant points above, below, and no graph at all. Okay, let's try this now with a quadratic. So I have this quadratic here, x squared minus 1, and I want to look at the graphs of the square root of x plus 1. So I'm going to do the exact same thing I did before. So here's my table of values, x and y, and then I'm just going to take the square root. So square root of 15, square root of 8, square root of 3, square root of 0, square root of negative 1, not allowed, square root of 0, square root of 3. Oh, it starts to get symmetrical, and I match. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at um, here below the x-axis. None of this is going to exist because I cannot square root a negative number. I'm not allowed to do that. So let's plot some of these points. So at negative 4, I'm at 3.9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, I'm up at right about there. And then at negative 3, I'm at 2.8, so right about there. At negative 2, I'm at 1.7. At negative 1, I'm at 0. And then the same thing on the other side. So 1 and 0, and then I'm going to do 2 and 1.7. And then 3 and 2.8 and 4 and 3.9, so right about like that, okay? So I know to get from here to this point here, I kind of have to curve, and then I just kind of keep going up, and then here I curve and keep going up. So I have two sections. I have no graph in the middle because that dips below the x-axis. So again, I want to do the same thing I did before and kind of scan, zoom in, especially in on this area here. So you can see over here, I've zoomed my graph in a little bit, and I want to look at my invariant points and what's happening at the graph around there. So let's look at my first invariant point at 0. Again, because the square root of 0 is 0, that is why it is an invariant. So you can see I have two invariant points, negative 1 and 1. Then I also have an invariant point when y is equal to 1, because again, the square root of 1 is 1. Okay, now these ones here, I used my graphing calculator to help me come up with my x-coordinates, so root 2 and negative root 2, okay? And again, I'm interested in what is happening in that middle section. So in that middle section there, you can see, very similar to what happened before, I have that looping above and the looping above, okay? So I can, again, use my band to help me out with that. 
So using that acronym BAN, you can see here, the same thing happens. Here, my square root is below. Here, in between 0 and 1, my square root is above. And here, I have no square root because I can't square root a negative. Same thing happens on this side here. No graph down here. It's above here and below here. And I've illustrated that all here. So the root of the function is below the function when the function is greater than 1. The root of the function is above the original function when it's in between 0 and 1. And the root of the function does not exist any time the function is less than 0. So you can use that ban notation again when you have quadratics. So let's try another graph here. So I have this quadratic graph and I want to graph the square root. So right away I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to draw in my um, my invariant points at 0 and my invariant point at 1 so I can use my ban notation to help me out. Okay, so using this notation here. So let's start at the bottom. So below 0 I have no graph. So there's no graph there and there's no graph there because I cannot square root a negative. Okay, in between 0 and 1, I'm going to be graphing above. I'm going to be curving kind of above it. So I'm just going to kind of exaggerate that above. Okay, and then above 1, I'm going to be below the original graph. Now this one's a little different because it has a bounded area. So what I'm going to look at is this um, y-intercept of 4. When I take the square root of 4, it becomes 2. And then I can even look at 3. The square root of 3 is about 1.7, so that'll be right there and right about there. So this is a really wonky graph here, the way that I'm drawing it, because I'm really exaggerating that part. But it's going to look something like that. Okay, That would be what the square root function looks like. And again, you can always check that on your calculator. But that band notation will always help you below, above, and no graph at all. So, quick little lesson, isn't it? Let's look at the summary. So, the graph of a square root function does not exist below the y-axis. That's your n, no graph allowed. The square root of a function has invariant points 0 and 1. It is above, that's your a, anytime the function is in between 0 and 1. And it is below any time your function is greater than 1. So if you remember that notation, that will kind of help you. And again, these graphs, you can check these on your graphing calculator as well. So anytime I'm dealing with square roots, I always think of vans. And I'm just wondering if you've ever thought of this as well. Whenever I look at vans, I always think of the square root of the answer on the calculator. If you've never seen that before, I hope now every time you see a vans shirt, you'll think of math and you'll think of the square root of answer. So I want you guys to do practice questions number one to six. I have detailed solutions on D2L, and then you can move along to your textbook questions.